Good morning and welcome to the In the Black Northern Territory Indigenous Business Resilience Program. Um, today is about putting a spotlight on the Northern Territory Indigenous Business and all the really amazing and deadly stuff that's happening in the Northern Territory. Um, just apologies first for being a bit late. Uh, we're having some telecommunication issues. But first, let me start by acknowledging the traditional custodians on the land upon which we are both meeting and talking on today. I'm on Gimoy, Wallaburra, Yadinji country in Cairns, far north Queensland, but I acknowledge all First Nations people, our elders, past, present and emerging, and extend my respect to you, to your family and to all of the people that are listening in today. And today on our campfire yarn, we're really excited to actually welcome Christine Ross. Uh, Christine Ross is the Managing Director of Christine Ross Consulting. But today we're talking about an amazing forum that we're having that they're hosting in the Northern Territory called Celebrating Aboriginal Women in the NT, Our Strength, Knowledge and Resilience as Leaders. So welcome, Christine. Christine's on the phone today. Um, talking to us. So welcome, Christine. How are you, my sister? Yeah, really good, Julianne, and huge apologies. Of all the days, it's like the internet just decided to drop out <laughs> in my local suburb here. <laughs> no, that's no no sorry necessary, sis. And it just keeps highlighting the fact of all the telecommunications issues that we have. But it's just like being in business, you know, we have to pivot, you know, sometimes we have to change what we're doing, sometimes we have to, you know, take a little bit longer to get through, but we've got you now, and it's really deadly. So, but I'm really interested because for me being, um, you know, Torres Strait a woman, but, you know, as one mob Indigenous people and as women coming together, and I absolutely love what you're um, doing in the Northern Territory. Can you tell us about your forum? Tell us a bit about yourself, actually, first. And the That's right. I, I better acknowledge this country I'm on today. Um, I wish to acknowledge the Larrakia people on this beautiful country I grew up in. I have the privilege of growing up in, so very much my hometown. Um, and sitting here today, and bad luck about the other, um, but uh, most people know I'm an Arava, it's an Arava, Katie Thomas, so from Alice Springs, uh, born in Alice Springs in Darwin. Um, I do permanently live over in the West, in Omwaja country in Perth, um, but I spend a lot of my time as a businesswoman and also coming back to catch up with family in Darwin, so um, kind of go between NC and WA these days. That's deadly. And also tell us a little bit about your business as well, you know. You, you're a, you know, deadly Aboriginal woman in business. Yeah, no, thank you for that. Um, I've been running my own consultancy since 2015 and it kind of came about by accident because I was in the resource sector, mining boom went bust in WA, so we all had to kind of find new careers. And I thought, well, it's very timely to set up my own consultancy. And so five years on, I kind of had a look back. Uh, the one thing that I'm passionate about is organising conferences and events for, for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women. And just on that note, I'd love to do a shout out to our women, particularly down south who are in lockdown. Yes. Um, and they're hoping that for the forum in Darwin, we're able to live stream it. Um, simply because it is really difficult and our hearts certainly go out to them. Um, we are lucky in NT and WA, we're able to have less restrictions, life carries on. Um, so a special shout out to them. Uh, so I've been doing what I do for a long time. When people ask me, I say I kind of do A to Z, anything Aboriginal, because you never know what's going to come across your desk. Um, but if I have to say the thing I'm most passionate about, it's organising forums like this one in Darwin, the one I ran in Perth at the end of July. Um, and I guess for these forums, they don't just happen, they don't fall out of the air. Um, there's always a connection to the history of it. And I think, and you'll remember back in 2018, the uh, NAIDOC thing then was because of who we can. And I guess we continue carrying on the celebration of that because our women are very much the backbone of our culture and our leaders and often do, with no disrespect to the brothers, do a lot of the heavy lifting 
um, when it comes to a lot of things in our Aboriginal community and our culture. So, yes, in a nutshell, it's, it's hard to explain <laughs> yeah. exactly what I do, but I do a lot of different things. Yeah, no, that's really deadly, sis, you know, and as we know, business is hard at the best of times, but we keep pushing on because, you know, it is what you talk about. That's why I love your title, you know, our strength, our knowledge and our resilience as leaders because I often talk about, you know, as leaders and, and especially in Indigenous business, when one of us rise, we all rise, you know, and because no matter what we do, we we it's about bringing about you know openness and opportunity to our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander mob, um, and working in you know we've got some deadly non-Indigenous mob who who really love to work with us and things like that. But we bring that strength and that knowledge and resilience. So absolutely love your title of your forum. So tell us a little bit about this um, celebrating Aboriginal women in the NT forum. You know. Uh, well, just to go back a little bit, so um, Kenya Nasser and I, and I know you've had her as a guest on this program, um, we started organising our first Aboriginal conference about 27 years ago in Darwin. And some of our listeners would know it was called uh, Aboriginal Education Through Aboriginal Eyes. And it was always about empowering our mob and having a forum where we could come together as Aboriginal people and talk about issues that were affecting us. Uh, if you fast forward in 2020, Kenya and I are also on an organisation called NASUA, which is the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Women's Alliance. So I'm the chairperson, Tanya's Northern Territory Director. Now on NASUA, we have been talking about, which is the voice of Aboriginal women, about how in 2020 everything's changed for everybody. Um, and for our women, they've felt quite isolated. I think last time we had a catch up in the NT with a group was about a year ago. Um, so this year, people have been just doing their own thing, but also needing to reach out. So uh, a couple of things brought us to having this forum in Darwin. One was the link with that to us and knowing that we needed to support our women across Australia. And that the best way to do that always is when you bring women together in one room. Um, the other one was uh, the Black Lives Matter protests. And I've been to a few um, and watched some of them from around the country. And it's often our, well, it's often our grandmothers, the mothers, the sisters that are standing up doing the talking. Um, and we thought, as Aboriginal women um, and people, we have felt the full brunt of what's happened with the racism that has occurred. So, again, we needed to have some sort of a healing forum where we came together. So we're kind of combining a few things at this one, which is in Darwin on the 24th of September. So it's a link with our Aboriginal business women. It's a lot of us are sole traders and it affected our work immediately when we went into lockdown. Um, the other one is our resilience, our strength, our coming together and supporting one another. Um, often because of the racism that we experience. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is our celebration, because there are amazing Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women all around Australia. Mm -hmm. um, and this one obviously is due to our heart, because these are our empty sisters yes. who have achieved in their workplaces, in their communities, in their families. And it's all about celebrating that. And I'll talk about some of those individual uh, speakers after. Yeah, that, that's really deadly, sister, to hear all that that you're doing and, and also bringing to the forefront about what we do go through as Indigenous women um, as well. And like you said as well, not to take anything away from our um, Indigenous brothers and bullers, absolutely not, but, um, you know, definitely. So, yeah, really interested to hear about your lineup of speakers. I have read that. Um, but, yeah, give us a bit of a, a quick overview of who you got speaking at the forum. You know, it's always interesting when you're trying to do a one-day forum, there are so many women to choose mm. from um, that it's hard to compress into one day. Yes. And my job as the facilitator is trying to keep them on track because there's the big speakers in that room. Uh, we released the first lot of names last night, but there's a whole slate of others that have come. Um, but someone like Marion Scriptor, who is the CEO and in the Northern Territory, the first female, Aboriginal female, as um, head of the Northern Land Council. She was always, she also was at one stage the highest ranking Aboriginal.
Aboriginal um, MP in Australia when she was the Acting Chief Minister of the Northern Territory. Deadly. So I'm really keen to hear about her journey as an Aboriginal woman working in the area she does. And we know our land councils that, that can be a tough gig at times. Um, we know the oh, Dan Caton is the CEO of Dilly Round Aboriginal Housing. Now she would have won a Telstra Business Woman of the Year Award this year in 2020. Um, Dr Donna Ubergaard, who's known to quite a few people, uh, owns an Aboriginal broadcasting TV station. So that's no easy thing to set that up. Um, and as a Larrakia woman on her country. Uh, we're going to have a panel of Aboriginal business women, um, because as you and I know in this space, um, there's a lot happening. I was Philby, of course, is the MD of Savannah Solution Business. We're going to have this amazing Aboriginal artist called Louise Namanina Nakanaga. Um, and she's going to talk about her bush medicine paintings that have been transformed onto people's uniforms that they're wearing around the country. Uh, Naomi Anthony was a previous uh, CFO of a mining company, no, a construction company, and as a chief finance operator, that's no easy feat in very much a man's world. Uh, Peggy Nasser, of course, will run sessions from her mm -hmm. Rise Up program. Joanne Nasser, her sister, who's an artist, is running a session um, where women will do some artwork as well. So it's quite a mixed session and quite a working progress at the moment. Yeah, that, that sounds that sounds amazing, you know, and you know what I was saying before about our strength and resilience is we, we also are able to share and to glean off one another, you know, and in, in building that strength and resilience and the knowledge, you know, that we can gain as well. So that just sounds absolutely deadly, like absolutely. So when is your forum? Can you give us some details around the date and the time? Yeah, absolutely. So it's in Darwin. Three weeks time. It's on Thursday, the 24th of September, 2020. It will go from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, people in Dharma will know Harry's Place, which is a new community centre um, in the northern suburbs. Uh, we always try and make sure it's, um, there is no cost for our women to attend mm -hmm. because we never want that to be a gatekeeper and stop them coming in. Um, not only will we have the incredible diversity of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women speaking, we will also have the diversity of participants yes. in the audience because often these forums are a bit life-changing for some of our women when they hear inspirational, motivational messages from our speakers, but we will also give them an opportunity to participate and have their voices heard. They're not just sitting all day. Um, we won't release registrations until next Friday, uh, but the key thing now for people listening in is we are always seeking sponsorship because in order for our women to come along and enjoy it at no cost, we appreciate our sponsors um, coming on board. Definitely. So if you're out there and you've, you've listened today and we thank you for listening to Christine Ross about celebrating women in the NT. If you're interested in sponsoring the event, um, Christine, how can they, who, who do they contact for that? Yeah, so um, it's on go to my Christine Ross Consultancy Facebook page. Yes. And I've put up all the details. So I've put up my email, which is christine.ross at lion.com.au. So it's all there, contact me through LinkedIn, um, but preferably through my consultancy Facebook page. And um, we, we've got the package ready to go. And um, it's not a huge cost. At the end of the day, it's only a one day event. Um, but I'm keen to also get some of our Aboriginal women from out of Darwin to come in for it. Um, you know, representatives from Central Australia, uh, from the Tiwi Island, from Arnhem Land. Um, you know, so that we've got what we like to celebrate is the diversity of Aboriginal women in the Northern Territory. That's fantastic. So just to reiterate that, if you're interested in attending or if you're interested in sponsoring, um, you can go to Christine Ross's uh, consultancy Facebook page, which is up on the screen now. You can send an email to christine.ross at live 
tbs.com.au. Um, but thank you so much, my sister, for coming on and sharing today. We really appreciate the time. We understand perfectly about our telecommunications issues, but we're always trying to find a way to get through, you know, and we're glad that you were able to come and join with us on the phone today. Is there any last words you'd like to say? No, I think for our women around Australia, you know, it's absolutely lots of love and respect for all of our people because this has been a, an incredible year in a no good way. Um, yes. But to stay strong where you are, make sure you're reaching out if you need support out there. Um, yeah, from that point of view, we know that a lot of our women experience domestic violence. So there is always help out there and we're posting on our national Facebook page where you could go. Um, it's about staying strong and resilient yourself. Um, if you're sitting in Melbourne and you're listening to this and feeling quite down because you're in lockdown, um, try and reach out to sisters. We'll support you and we hope to have this up so it is live stream um, just to, you know, celebrate and the most of all support our women around Australia. That's too good, too deadly. And, of course, we'll share um, your information across our social media platforms as well. So thank you again for your time today, my sister. I'd like to, to finish where we started by acknowledging all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander ancestors, elders, community and all of our family. If you'd like to see this, if you'd like to know more about the Northern Territory in the Black Indigenous Business Resilience Program, you can actually just comment deadly in the comment below and one of our team will be in contact with you. Also, if you're watching this replay on YouTube, you can click on the information below and you'll also get access to the program. And the program is for NT Indigenous businesses. But thank you for today. Uh, we're really thankful that you came and we could share the, an amazing forum that's coming up for our NT Indigenous women. Um, our program is running for, six, uh, for 12 weeks and we are in our sixth week, but still come, there's lots of things to be involved in. Um, our next guest speaker is on Monday, so stay tuned for that. But thank you all for your time today and for tuning in. Have a great weekend.